This tip is to help you automate some of the um, friction that you have with scheduling meetings on other people's calendars and finding out when everybody is available. This is a great first party Microsoft app built into Outlook as an add-on called Find Time. Now, this email that we're looking at right here is about the biggest nightmare that you can have whenever you're working with external parties or you're working on a project with most, multiple people. I've got an email from an outside person, John Moore, emailing um, five people in my organization saying, hey, when can we meet for this project? Do you guys have any availability next week? I hate these emails because now you have to go in, if you're the responsible one in your party, you have to go in to the calendar, you've got to add everybody's calendar, I've got Adele, I've got Alex, but I don't have the other three people, I've got to go search for their calendar, add it to my Outlook, get in the schedule view, try to see when everybody's available, make a bulleted list, send it back to the person that's outside saying, here's the times we're available, why does that work for you, and then the time zone's all messed up, and it's just a mess, and I hate doing it. So I've discovered a long time ago the find time add-in for Outlook, and I use it all the time, and I find that almost nobody knows about it. So we're going to go over that today. I've got this crap email from John asking when we're available. He's taking the lazy way out. I want to respond back with a poll that everybody can vote for a time that works for them and then it will schedule the meeting for us. So the way that you do this is using the find time add-in in Outlook. If you don't have that installed, like I don't have that right now, you can click the browse add-in store, or you can go to findtime.microsoft.com and click install there. But if you go to the add-ins right here, I can search for the one called find time. And you'll see that find time comes up in the results got four out of five stars because it's a really good app. It's made by Microsoft, 449 ratings. We're gonna go ahead and add this to our Outlook in Office 365. So I've got that going here. And now I have a new button in Outlook when this email is selected to reply with a meeting poll. That's exactly what we're gonna do. So we're gonna click on reply with meeting poll. That will come up in this new sidebar that's been installed for me from Find Time, and it asks me a few questions like, when do you want to meet? How long do you want to meet? Stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and say, this is going to be an hour long meeting, so we can adjust the meeting window. I only want to meet during work hours. The way that you set these work hours is in your Outlook client under the calendar settings. You'll go into the calendar and you'll set um, when your availability is, and it will use those work hours to suggest times for you. My time right now is set for 8 o'clock in the morning to 5 o'clock in the evening. That's just the default for my Outlook installation. And because all of these five people, minus John, are in Contoso, they're in my environment, I can see when they are available. And you'll see that there's green, little green people for all of my Contoso people. But John, we don't have access to his calendar because he's external to the company. So he will be grayed out but he can vote on the poll. So I don't like 8 a.m. meetings. We can, uh, we can go out to next week because he said he wants to discuss the project next week. So I'll click the little arrow, we go to next week. And on the 21st, we've got some time, 9.30, everybody's available, 12.30. If I scroll down here a little bit, you'll see that the icons kind of change a little bit. And you'll see that I'm not available at these times, so it doesn't recommend them to me. So there's a couple available there. I've got nice green bars on all of these dates because some slot during that day is available. If you see it as red, then that means there's no times in that day where your organization side is available. So we'll do like nine o'clock here, 10 o'clock. We'll give a few different options here. We definitely don't want to meet on, on uh, Christmas Eve. But on the 23rd, we might be able to do 9.30. People might leave a little bit early. So we won't do the 1 p.m. one. And we're gonna hit next. I've selected six times that work for me that I'm okay doing and I know everybody else is available. We're gonna click next here. And then now I get some settings right before I inject this into an email. Now, 
I want to select the times. I can put in a location. So if I if we're meeting in person, I can put a location there. That doesn't really affect us right now anyway, because most of us are still working from home. So I'm going to leave that blank. The Teams meeting, you want to leave this checked because it will generate a Microsoft Teams meeting in your organization when the invite is generated. And then I can turn on some of these settings here for like, do I want to be notified when somebody votes? Do I want to be notified if somebody like um, suggests a new time? Something like that. So I'm just going to leave those at the default. And we're going to hit add to email right here. When I click that, that generates the poll and it opens up a new email in my Outlook. So I'm now responding to everybody. And I've got everybody in the two line. The people that were in the CC are also in the CC line. And then it's going to invite them to go ahead and vote on this poll. Now, one thing that's interesting about find time is it's even smart enough to tell between the two line and the CC line. You'll find out that everybody in the two line is going to be required for this calendar invite. Everybody in the CC line is going to be optional. So that's a super helpful tip to be able to spread them out. You can even do optional and required with find time. So I like the way this looks. Everybody can vote on it. We're going to click send. Now I send that off. I go about my business. That took me, what, less than a minute to just get everybody's availability and send off a poll. Now it's on them to vote for what time they want to vote for. So over here in my test environments, I've got Alex. We'll bring up his Outlook here. And you'll see there's two emails. There's the one from John that says, hey, when can everybody meet? And I'll see that Megan replied back with a find time poll. Well, what's this? Let's click on select options. That's going to open up a new tab. This works in any version of Outlook. I happen to be in the web. And now I can look at this and I can see because I'm logged in, what are my available times? And I see that I'm free at 730 in the morning, 1030, 7 o'clock. So of these times, I can see when I'm free and when I'm not free. The other people have not voted yet, or I would see what their votes were. Other than Megan, of course, she's available because she made the poll. Let's say that um, I'm not available at 7.30. I'm available at 10.30, not 7, not 8. Uh, 9 o'clock, I like that time. We'll prefer that. So that puts a heart next to that one. And then 7.30, no, I don't want to meet at 7.30 in the morning. So I'm going to go through that list here, and I'm going to hit vote. That is now submitted Alex's vote to the voting, voting pool. So Alex goes about his day, and now Nestor, he gets the same email from Megan that says, hey, let's vote on a poll time. I click on it as Nestor, and it opens up the tab here, and I'll see now Alex has voted yes, no, he prefers this time. So that kind of informs my own decision too. Definitely don't want this, but I prefer 1030. Um, let's go no for all of these. Let's say yes, and... Why not? I get up early on Wednesdays. So we're going to hit vote. Nestor's now done. He's voted. And Megan, she's starting to get these responses in. So Megan got the invite or the uh, the response from Alex. So I can scroll down in my email. I can do it on my phone too. Scroll down and see what Alex voted for. So that's pretty cool. Nestor has voted. So now I can see that Nestor responded to the voting poll. And I see his answers. It looks like we're getting kind of consens uh, consensus around 12.30 and 11 o'clock on, on Monday and Tuesday. But somebody's not available on Wednesday. There's, there's a few no votes. Let's keep moving down the list here. Patty, she gets the same email. She opens up the options here. And she sees that you know a few people have voted. She's, she's a little bit late to the party. But same thing for her. She doesn't like these times. Um, she likes that one. Maybe she doesn't like any of these other times. But she wants to propose a new time. Maybe, what about 9 o'clock a.m. on Wednesday? So let's hit propose a new time. And we'll say 9 o'clock on Wednesday the 23rd. I like that better. So she's going to do that. She's added a new time to the poll here. And she submits her vote, get rid of her. And now Megan sees two emails. One is that Patty has voted. So 
So she submitted her vote. She said no to a lot of the things. But she added an additional choice right here. So she can now go through and she can vote whether that time works or not. She's the owner of the poll. So when it opens up as Megan, she's going to see this and she's able to book these meetings and delete times and things like that. She's busy at this time, 1130 in the morning. That doesn't work for me. So I'm not only going to vote, I'm going to take that option out so nobody else can vote for it. So I click that trash can. I got rid of the choice. Now I close it. I still go about my day. The last person on the Contoso side is Adele. She's going to go through here and she's going to vote. So she sees the email, select options. She goes through here and she votes no, yes, um, no, no, yes, and no. Okay, so she has voted. She's done. Megan again gets another email here at the top. And now she sees that even more people have voted. There it is. So there's Adele. She has now voted. And the only one left is John. Now, John may still go in here and vote. That's great. But if a day, a couple days go by and it's clear that John's not going to vote, Megan at any time could click the schedule button and it will go ahead and schedule that meeting with a Microsoft Teams meeting injected in there and it will make it available for everybody on their calendar. Now, I'm not going to do that. I am going to go ahead and vote because I want to show you what this looks like whenever... Um, whenever everybody reaches consensus. So I'm going to open up here as John. I'm going to select the options. So this opens up in my, my native Mac uh, browser here. And I can see when I'm available, when I'm busy. And let's say, let's just pretend that I'm free on some of these. So I'm going to say yes. Um, I'm going to prefer that one and hit no on all the rest of them. And I will hit vote. So I have voted. Now everybody has voted in this poll. Megan's going to get an email here that says, congratulations, you've reached consensus. So everybody has voted and it went ahead and scheduled the meeting for us. So here in a moment, I should get that meeting invite sent to me. I can click on this to review the voting if I want to, because it doesn't show on the uh, summary page, but we'll see that, okay, this has been scheduled. It picked 12.30 p.m. for me. And the reason why it picked 12.30 is because that was the one where everybody said yes. One person said they preferred it. Over here on some of these other ones, um, not everybody said yes. And it's going to pick the earliest option where everybody reaches consensus. So even though more people preferred this slot at 11 o'clock in the morning, it's still booked the 1230 one because um, that was the first one where everybody said that they could do it, regardless of what they prefer. If you are going to schedule it manually using those schedule buttons, you'll probably want to go in and, um, and take those prefers, those preferences, the hearts, into consideration. But there we go. So now we've got a meeting invite. And over here on John, the external party, I've got this meeting invite for that time. I can go ahead and accept that invite. Megan won't see that because she owns the calendar. All she's going to see is that now she has this meeting next week on her calendar ready to go. And if we open that up, it's got a Microsoft Teams meeting right there. The three people who were requ required are there. The people who were in the CC line are now optional as well. And she also just got that email saying that the external person accepted. So now without looking at other people's calendars, without opening up several different things, Megan was able to, in less than a minute, create a meeting poll, let everybody else vote on that poll. And when everyone in the list voted, she it automatically went ahead and scheduled that meeting. Now, the only other thing she would have had to do is if somebody refused to vote and a couple days went by, she could look at the list and just check like what she wants to do and she could click the schedule button to force that time and it will send out an invite for everybody. So she didn't even have to, to craft an invite. She didn't have to look at anybody else's calendars or anything like that. That is the Microsoft Find Time application built into Outlook as an Outlook add-in. So this is available for PC and for Mac today.
as well as um, when you install it, you'll see it in your Outlook for the web experience as well. So anyway, I hope that helps you out. If you're that type of person that gets one of these, hey, when can you meet emails, and you feel obligated to look at everybody's calendar and spend a bunch of time, I hope that find time helps you find more time in your day to get some actual work done instead of chasing down people's schedules all the time. I hope you have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.